I believe that question's going to get answered today. I really do. Live in love. That's the whole theme today. It's interesting. The title to the message that I'm preaching to you was thought through on Saturday afternoon. And some of the work, of course, all week long had been done. But I come here to church and the entire theme is about love. <laughs> and my title is, A Love That Lasts for a Thousand Years and Beyond. That's the title of my message. I was like, wow, tell me if God doesn't do awesome things. And then in Sunday school, I know the same kind of theme. Man, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. It's just the Mark chapter 12 and verse 30 principle of loving God with all my heart, soul, and mind, and strength. You get me on this? And so today, God is good, is He not? Praise His name. Go right ahead, my dear brother, if you will. You know, that reminds me of some people that I've talked to, and they believe in the good works. And when you really look into them, to their eyes, and you actually see what they're saying, well, I did this, I did that, you don't see any love whatsoever. No, it's, it's not Christ's work. It's not Christ's Sometimes work. Sometimes when you witness to people, you have to you have them know when Christ is in you, yeah. you want to do. Yeah. You Amen. want to. It's you don't care what power. cost it Amen. actually is. You don't, you don't care about nothing else. <laughs> but you want to because he is so infused in you that it becomes a habit. It becomes just like breathing. And that's Amen. how we need to love. Mm. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. You are so merciful to us, even as a nation. How there's so much heartache, there's so much pain, there's so much unknown. We don't know what the future may hold. But we know at the end, you are the winner. You mm. are the one in control of all things in the past, Glory in the God. present, and in the future. And as we come before you, Lord, we seek your face. Mm. We seek your spirit to come upon this preaching tonight mm. or this morning. And just move. Just move and be glorified yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Ross, Loretta, Judy, Dan, Nancy, several that left for Sunday school. It's why they came for the morning service and realized there was even a worship. But there are several visitors today, so praise the Lord. Let's stand together. Let's all stand, please. Speaking along the words of love, it's, it's fantastic to see our welcoming mission ministry with Sabra. She is such a blessing. She greets the people with a smile, with compassion, and love. May I see the hands of those visitors today. And we Over ask here. this for one Over simple there. reason. Over in the back. You will get greeted with love, Amen. kindness, consideration, and compassion. <laughs> welcome to our church. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everybody, please shake those hands. Amen, amen. Go say hi to somebody. Good morning. Good morning to you, here, man. <laughs> This is this is only my this is only my second time. I did. Loretta is Clemson. Cool. All right. Hey, make sure you greet Cliff's sister. Cliff Hopkins' sister is here. Loretta, tremendous lady. Huh? Oh, you just had it. You would. He might be up there playing, man. Glad you're here, Loretta. I'm sorry you're hurt. You're his sister. So sorry. I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> guys decided to sit back here in the overflow, huh? All these guys back here are mean, you know, in the overflow. <laughs> hey, man.
Okay, if I could have everybody please take their seats, please. Everybody, please take your seats. Pastor Barry. <laughs> Pastor Barry. Yeah. There's another greeting that we wish to do today. Would you oh. please come forward? Over here to me. No, look at me. Come on. Around here. Around this way. Well, if you wish, that's fine. How you doing? Okay. Good to see you. How you doing, Violet? Everybody, if you would please rise in your seats. Stand on your pews. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Just kidding. If my if the ladies would come forward. Oh, what is oh come on, didn't we do this Wednesday already, you guys? What in the world? Good okay, night. cue the music, please. Oh, that's mine. Yes. <laughs> that was mine. All right. First off, you need to make a wish. <laughs> All right. 2,000 in church next Sunday. That's all right. Yes! It wasn't all one breath. I must admit that. Pastor, this is from the congregation. I wish oh, you wow. to read it to them, please. Whoa, what? There's two pages. Our pastor's Bible. You might look at this Bible and think it's worthless. We look at it and we know its true worth, the reason of its value. It's because we know the man who carried it. We know of the way he carried it. We know of how he spoke of God's Word from it. We know of how he wrote notes in it. We know the notes that he wrote were for each of us. We know of the names that are written in here and why. We know those names were prayed over countless times. Prayed over because of marriage, birth, sickness, death. We know He held it close to His heart as He holds each of us. We know the verses read from it were given to Him by God so that we would learn of the truth, the only truth that we need to know. The truth of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. With love, your flock... Jeremiah 3.15 Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. The Bible underneath is one of your old Bibles. <laughs> it was acquired with the assistance of your family, your wife especially. That's an old one. We yeah. will put this Bible and the papers in frames and they will be displayed in the front case for all to see from now on. Grief, brother. Okay. Well, bless the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, maybe that would now, be a good idea. Now, <laughs> how about a rendition of Happy Birthday? Oh, good grief. All right, go ahead. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dr. Mary. Happy birthday to you. He hideth my soul. Sing it out. Why don't you just stay Amen. right where you're at and sing to the Lord. Bless 611, 611. Here we go. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of a rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of a rock, that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hides my light in the depths of His love and covers me there with His hand and covers me there with His hand. A wonderful Savior Jesus, my Lord, He taketh my burden, 
drifted away. Oh, you holded me up, and I shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. Glory to God. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of His love and covers me there with His hand. And covers me there with His hand. With numberless blessings each morning He crowns and filled with his fullness divine. I sing in my rapture, O oh, glory to God, for such a Redeemer as mine. Hatch Club is dismissed. Hatch Club is dismissed. In my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. Hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. When clothed in his brightness, transformed did I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, His wonderful love, I'll shout with a million on high. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of His love. And covers me there with his hand. And covers me there with his hand. Bless Amen. the Lord, I tell you. You may have don't a seat. love those old hymns. Amen. You need to fix your lover because it's broken, okay? I mean, I'm telling you, those are awesome hymns, aren't they? Praise the Lord. I just wanted to get up here. I'm not supposed to be the MC today. But I just need to thank you for that. That's awfully nice. What you did on Wednesday, what you've done all week. I don't know if it's because I just became a senior citizen. It's possible. But previous years, you haven't given quite the outpouring that you did this time. I mean, it's always been amazing, but you topped every other year this week, this time. And... Uh, I really think it's because you feel sorry for me. I... Well, come on. Uh, are you praying for the offering, Brother Earl? Yeah, why don't you come on? And men, uh, if you would, get ready for the offering here. We'll take that up. <laughs> was that what it was? <laughs> I'm going to switch gears this morning instead of telling you why you should give I want to tell you some ways that you should give how you can give a couple of you have asked me about credit cards uh, we don't take credit cards here at the church but we do take them online if you go to our website fbcseifer.org and go up to the top right hand corner you'll see given uh, double click on that and that'll take you to Tithely and Tithely through Tithely you can give with any credit card just about uh, credit card or from your bank account, savings or checking. Uh, just be aware that it takes five to 12 days. So if you, we, they put money in the bank on Monday from the credit card. So if you give on Monday or Tuesday, we'll have that the next Monday. But if you give on Wednesday or Thursday, it'll be a week from that Monday. So our, your dates are not gonna line up with our dates. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, also through the offering, of course, you can give uh, any kind of cash, coin, change, uh, bills, currency, uh, money orders, checks. Uh, we get all kinds of things in there, really. Money order, checks, and any kind of Reese's peanut butter candy, of course. Uh, in no, some no. countries, they give chickens. 
No, seriously. Any Corn. Kind of, any kind of reason, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But that's the ways that you can give. There's other ways you can give, too, of course. With your t you can give your time. You can cl help clean, work in the kitchen, do things like that. And that's all great. That's needed. Amen. And that doesn't take away from the 10% no. tithe that is uh, required to give by Scripture. So just keep that in mind. Okay, men, if you come forward. If you all have any questions about credit cards or anything, just feel free to, to ask me or Pastor David. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you for our Savior. Thank you for how you so lovingly and faithfully meet our needs each month as individuals and as a church. And we just pray, Lord, that as we take this time to give back a portion to you that you've given to us so freely and lovingly, we just pray that you might be honored and glorified. And we just ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Now, I heard that uh, somebody else has a birthday here today. Dennis? Yes. Dennis. Hey, Dennis Festermaker, you got the birthday today? Yes. Happy birthday. I'm not going to play that song. I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't play that song on my guitar. You know, so. I got my bagpipes for that. So anyway, um, this, is a, this is a fun little tune. I don't know if any of you all have ever uh, listened to the Gaither Gospel music. Uh, one of the regulars on the Gaithers was uh, the Goodman family, the Happy Goodmans. And uh, one of the most recognizable voices in Southern gospel music was uh, Vestal Goodman. And so uh, this was a, a, a song from the Happy Goodmans, and I know you've probably heard this one before. So I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I got to make it better. sing that song and not make me laugh like Keith does. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I love that guy. <laughs> Are you going to direct the next hymn? I think so. Are you going to be as vibrant? I don't know. Probably. Come on, man. <laughs> I just love it. All right. Hey, y'all. I want to know, are you excited about Missions Conference coming yeah. out? I got, some, I got some news for you, okay? I got some news for you. We were praying on Thursday, and God just brought us that complete whole idea of what we're going to be doing. So you know, 
for the year 2024. We had the theme Living Stones. And that's why you got all these rocks up here. That's why you got the backdrop on stones. That's why you got little stones around a building here and there, just reminders. And you'll see signs. Next year's theme is dry trees, green trees. You say, now, Pastor, where does all this come from? Right from the Word of God. Okay, right from the Word of God. We are living stones that the Lord has brought together, that has made what we made here in this church, this church and other churches as well. The Lord's bride all over the world. We're living stones. And what he's saying by that is that you and I have been given the unction of the Holy Spirit. We've been given the blessing if you've been saved. You have the Holy Spirit by God's grace working through you in an exciting way. And God has just made you alive. Now, next year comes from the theme of Jesus Christ saying, if they do these things in a green tree, what will it be when that tree is brown or dry? Now, what that means is this. Christian, in my purview, in my understanding of that text, one thing Jesus was saying, because He was saying several things. The applications are wide. But He was saying, listen, if right now, with all you've got, you're watered well, you're green, you're doing great, if right now you complain and you're a hypocrite, and you're not doing God's will, and you're seeking to see Him do right in your life, you're not doing that, then He says, what's going to happen when everything's gone? What's going to happen when the real persecution starts? And so that's next year's theme, 2025. You see, now, you haven't mentioned the missions conference. It's both. Now, I know this is crazy, but listen to this theme, all right? Stones and trees... Or you. That's the theme. We're actually going to put that everywhere. Stones and trees or you. You say, Pastor, what are we getting at here? I want you just to think through this verse for a minute. Luke 1940. All right, Luke 1940. Missions conference coming up at the end of October. I want us to start thinking about this. I need six or eight ladies that are going to put trees and stones all over this building, up here, back there. I don't know what you're going to make the trees out of. Maybe even bring real trees. Who knows? But verse 40, and he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace to do what? The stones would what? Immediately cry out. Do you understand that Romans chapter 1 speaks of two things? It speaks of general revelation and it speaks of specific revelation. Specific revelation ought to come out of our mouths like, like, like words. Well, they do because they're words, right? So they ought to come out of our mouths constantly. The living Word of God ought to go out into the street. We ought to be witnessing, 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 telling people about Jesus Christ. And he says this, if these stop praising me, if we stop being what we ought to be, if we're not out doing the witnessing, then the rocks will cry out. And essentially what he's saying is, general revelation is not going to stop. People are going to look at stones, they're going to look at trees, they're going to look at forests, they're going to look at things and say, there's got to be a God. Why doesn't someone tell me about them? You know, there's people way back in the dark recesses of Africa that have never heard the story of Jesus Christ, but they look at a rock, they look at a tree, and they say, there's got to be a God. There's got to be a God because all this design demands that there is a designer, right? So the question is simple for you, Isaac. The question is simple for you, Tom. The question is simple for you, brother. Listen close to what I say. Either the rocks and the trees will cry out or you and I will cry out. So will it be the rocks? Will it be the trees or will it be you? That's what the theme is. So you're going to see rocks and trees all over the say all over the place. This verse, along with the same one that talks of the trees clapping their hands, the Word of God speaks of this as well. And so we're heading into next year, breakneck speed. I hope and pray that you'll get involved with us. Okay, uh, the greeting teams, the rotations, social hall, all the exciting things that are going on. Let me just move this for just a second, if I can, over to here. I want you to see that this next Sunday, you already know about Epic Sunday. 
Tonight, I'm going to give you a list in just a minute of people that I would love to see here a little bit early tonight. At 5 o'clock, we have an epic leader meeting. The epic system is just yellow evangelism, green preaching, blue intercession, and red communication. That's epic, E-P-I-C. And here's what we're going to do is these groups of people are coming after you. Yeah. The 67 of you that are sitting in here that are not involved, we're coming after you. So this is the first time that I've been here. We're coming after you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just just joking with you, all right? Those that have been around for a while and you still are trying to figure out how to get involved, uh, we're going to be able to talk with you about that. We're starting next Sunday night. You'll see there are 16 tables that will be set up in the social hall. They'll all have different emphases, and you can go through those tables and decide what you want to do. If you want to be a greeter, if you want to help on the safety team, if you want to help with food, which... uh, I enjoy. You know? How many of you are cooks? Let me see, okay? Oh, yes, that's great. Some teaching, some that are already teaching, some that are getting involved in one way or another. Uh, Brother Chris, why don't you come on up here? Brother Ray, if I could get you as well. Uh, Those of you who see this list right at the very beginning, it says mistakes are common. Help me correct them, okay? So if things aren't exactly right, if you're not in the right group, don't get mad at me, please, all right? Just, uh, just come to me and I'll be glad to change that. And then, if I could get Tony up here. Tony, why don't you come? Tony, come on up here, buddy, and grab these and just give those to anybody. Listen, these are the involvement opportunities right here. And it kind of gives you an explanation of how you can be involved, okay? So I'm going to give that to Tony. He's going to hand those out to you, all right? And we're going to get going on that. There are several sign-ups here. Harvest party's coming up in a week and a half, you guys. Harvest party's coming up in a week and a half. I want you to know that we're going to be talking today also about who might help with volleyball. You know we've had four marriages in this church because of volleyball. There's something about looking through that net and then the music starts, and they're like, na, 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 na. I don't know. <laughs> Volleyball court is extremely important. What are you laughing about? Volleyball court is very important. So the Harvest Festival is coming up, and I know already that Cassie mentioned that she would want to help with this. Who would help Cassie with the volleyball court? In other words, matchmaking. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. Okay. Who is it? Oh, yes. No, I'm sure of it. Somebody else? For volleyball. Helping this couple out. Okay, listen. How about the bonfire? I know Eric has been doing it to some degree. He's over there. I know I'm going to be able to write him down. But who would help Eric with getting the uh, bonfire area ready? This is, again, as you're looking at your invitations, those invitations, can we get those? I don't really remember. Did we cut up the rest of them? Okay, get those out to everybody. In the invitation, you'll see that. Welcoming also. Safety, you guys that are already on these teams. We're hoping that you'll be here that Friday night. It's uh, October the 4th. Uh, Chris Dyer already helping me out with the hayride, right? Getting it here, helping me with it, right? Oh, all right, okay, good, good, good. I, I didn't really know, so I wrote you down anyway. But anyway, uh, face painting. I know that Chrissy's going to be helping with that. Uh, who else might want to help with the face painting? Anybody else? Okay, Juan, don't do that. Because I will get you, man. Don't talk with your hands, because you will get picked, man. You will. All right. Registration, uh, the pink eyes I know are a big part of that. Anybody else that can help with registration, getting things set up? Of course, the horsemen are in everything. <laughs> so as far as greeting and being out in the front, we'll see several of those, but be a part of that. Parking as well. And then there's a need for food. So please sign up on that sign-up sheet. It's right here, okay? And we'll start it over here with you. So you can help with the matchmaking. What? What? No! No, 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 no. Let me see it, Penny. Let me see. Sign. Sign that and be holy, okay? 
I'll give you a pen so you can be holy, okay? There you go. Say, Pastor, why... <laughs> The, the girl gets spiked in the face with a ball. She's all out of it. And she's seeing stars. <laughs> and then the guy is. reaches down and she's like, oh, my hero. And then they get married. I mean, it was... That's how it works. Now, listen. If, if you've been here for a while, if you haven't, and you see all that joviality, you see these activities and stuff, listen, last year, 180 people were witnessed to through this. Because as they come in, we give them the full gospel with an explanation, and we explain, and, and then we interact with them. And we saw several saved last year through this. So 180 people were given the gospel. There are more people here than that, but those are the ones that came and actually were part of that gospel message. You pray that this year we'll see over 200 people given the gospel. That is the prayer. And these are people that usually don't frequent our church. And so we just need to pray that God will do a great work. Let me also tell you that with reference to Epic tonight, listen close. I'm going to name some names off. I'm praying. I've already talked with Pastor Michael. already talked with Brother Millman. Brother Dyer, if you could be here at 5, 5 o'clock, can you? Okay, great, great. Because I know sometimes it's just not possible. But uh, Christian Galetto. Did you tell these girls to get their hair done? For what? So you can be here at 5. Oh! Is it that bad? Is <laughs> All right. Get your hair done. Quit. <laughs> vanity, vanity. All is vanity. I heard that somewhere. All right, so Christopher Galetto, Jim Richardson, if he can get here. Chris and Christopher. Chrissy and Christopher Rohrbaugh. Uh, Charlene Hastings. Are the Hastings here today? They, they didn't make it, okay. We'll get with them. Maybe they'll be here tonight. Uh, preaching prep, uh, Pastor Barry, Jeff O'Day, if you can be here a little early, about five, can we do that? Oscar Fields, if you can be here, all right? Uh, Sabra, uh, Cam and Cassie, Dennis Hastings, Rappolds, and then uh, on, on um, intercession, Pastor David and Rajni, Earl and Sue, Barb and Tanya, if that's possible, Jim Elliott, and Peggy Williams. And then on contacts and communications, Pastor Tom, Robin and Dennis, Stephen Carroll, Sue and John, the Pink Eyes, Horsemans. Listen, Horsemans are divided because I don't want to give you up from the green team. Good. You need to be on the red. Oh, are you really? Constantly oh. taking people from the yellow. It happens. Every year, like, year after year. You guys are like multicolored, man. Yellow, yellow green. Okay, all right. Roberta Fields, and then uh, on that one as well, contact and communications. You, that was your choice, wasn't it? You were like, I don't want to be with my husband. No, no, she didn't say that. She doesn't say that. Uh, Davell Thomas also. Where is Davell? Is he back there? Okay, uh, at five, brother. If all of you that I just named could be here at five, and you say, I want to be a part of those teams. That's cool. If you want to be in the leadership part of those teams, just show up. But these that I've mentioned, I'm really hoping you'll be here. You say, well, I'm kind of new. Should I just show up? Yeah. 5 o'clock, come tonight, right before the service. 6 o'clock, we're doing that old-fashioned country whole worship tonight. It's going to be fun. We're going to enjoy it. We're going to have the old-fashioned choir. We're going to have the old-fashioned uh, selection of hymns and fun times. And uh, I heard that Keith is actually going to uh, do a jig or something, right? No? That's going to be a number five on a Richter scale if I do a jig. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't start... care if it rains or freezes. As long, long as I got that plastic <laughs> Jesus sitting on the dashboard <laughs> of my car. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. You started it. You started it. Oh, my goodness. One day I actually gave him a little plastic Jesus, too. I put You are a hairy tick. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're looking for missions, looking at some exciting things coming up, but I'm not going to give you any more of that. I want oh you to sign God. up for the monthly prayer meeting rotation on Tuesday night. There was a good group of about 18 or 20 that came this last Tuesday. Keep praying. That half an hour a day is extremely important, okay? This is a new sheet. 
I know that that other one was kind of full, but we're going to do a new sheet. You guys just decide what week you can pray. Next Saturday is the zoo evangelism. Going to the zoo and talking to people about Jesus Christ. You better sign that one too. You better sign that one too. Yeah. And this is the involvement Sunday dinner. This is next Sunday night. The involvement Sunday dinner. This is finger foods. You could just bring one of them pepperoni cheese things from Food Line or whatever. Uh, or you could make something special, but it's finger food, okay? And uh, it, yeah, go ahead. What is so, uh, next Saturday, 8.30 from the church. That's what time we're uh, leaving. It's not the normal 10 o'clock evangelism. We're going at 8.30. We're going to get some more hours in of telling people about Jesus Christ. But we're going to the zoo, all right? Just so you know, okay? Why don't you stand, my friends, all right? And let's sing together close to thee, close to thee. I know that almost seemed like an administration meeting rather than the announcements. It's a little bit strange, but thank you for bearing with us. Here we go. Thou my everlasting portion, more than friend or life to me, all along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with Thee, close to Thee, close to Thee, close to Thee, close to Thee. Close to thee. All along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with Thee. Not for ease or worldly pleasure, nor for fame my prayer shall be. Gladly will I toil and suffer, only let me walk with Thee. Close to Thee, close to Thee. Close to Thee, close to Thee, gladly will I toil and suffer, only let me walk with Thee. Lead me through the veil of shadows, bear me o'er my life's will see, then the gate of life eternal, may I enter, Lord, with Thee. Close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee. Then the gate of life eternal, may I enter, Lord, with thee. Amen. Have a seat, if you will. O oh, love that will not let me go, I rest my weary soul in Thee, I give Thee back the life I owe, that in Thine ocean depths it flow may richer, fuller be, O cross, that liftest up my head. I dare not ask to fly from Thee, oh, I lay in dust life's glory dead, and from the ground their blossoms red, like that shall endless be. O oh, love that will not let me go, 
is a text that I think goes extremely well with this morning's message. How many of you remember those first times you were a kid and you saw somebody that just attracted you? And you were like, I love them for the rest of my life. (laughs) All right? That happened to me in college. It did not happen with my wife. (laughs) She looked at me and thought, please, no, Lord. No, this is, that's just, I'm just kidding. But in reality, it did happen with me. I remember seeing her, and I remember having the opportunity to talk with her, and I told my buddy, Wes Rickard, I'm going to marry that girl. And 31 years ago, we did. And we still do. (laughs) And by God's grace, we will. (laughs) I got my little pet rock here. You see it says pet rock on it? That's my pet rock. (laughs) Every so often. It's up here. It's up here, and it's part of this entire idea of this year's rock i got to tell you something. You and I have a great Savior. And He's the rock too. If you're going to Song of Solomon, you can't do that. Go to Song of Solomon, if you will. Right at the very beginning. We'll talk some about puppy love versus real love. Puppy love versus real love. You know, it has been proven, and this is the reason that so many people are up in arms about children being abused. There is a movie, do you remember this? Sound of Freedom, that speaks of the way that children are being used and abused. I am concerned because there's a great deal of things being hidden today. And one thing that I believe is that senators and congressmen and people who are in our government are a part of of taking children and misusing them sexually. I believe that. I believe that. These people are on lists, and yet it's hidden. People don't talk much about it. I can tell you from experience, psychologically, as well as learning, scientifically, that a child's brain does not fully develop until he's about 19 years old. Now, I realize that that sounds odd, but those of you who are 13, 14, 15, and you're just sure you found the love of your life, just wait until your brain is fully developed, okay? (laughs) Please. You may see her differently, okay? At 19, you'll look over and go, what was I thinking? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But in reality, a child's brain does develop over time. And it has been proven. This is part of the reason that early on, we saw this. This is nothing new. And we understood that children ought to be cared for with kid gloves. Pardon the pun. But the idea is simple. We need to protect our kids. We need to protect our grandchildren. We need to be careful. I don't know how many times, even just this week, I've seen a new missing child poster come out. I have a friend that actually puts them on their Facebook feed. And I see it every so often. And it sickens my stomach because I know some of what's going on. Now I know that this is going to be hard to understand. But the Bible tells us that in the last days, love will wax worse and worse. And what that means is, People will love each other less, and parents will actually love their children less. And so, it is unfortunate to have to tell you this, but even some parents are in on the action. They want to get rid of their kids. They find out in the black market how to get in contact with people who will take their kids and sell them so that they can get money. And then they turn their backs on those kids or send them to a certain place to play and then act like they didn't know. It's happening. Say, how could that happen? 
you're, you're joking if you ask. Because you know Jeremiah 17.9 says the heart of man is deceitful. It is desperately, it was above all things, desperately wicked. Say, Pastor, why do you start a sermon on love like that? Because we need to know what love is not before we learn what love is. That is why. It is not love to have a child. It is not love to be emotionally satiated. It is not love, it don't call that love in the sense of Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love. It is charity in that sense. And charity is very different from the kind of love that's talked about prevalently in our society. It seems like that's the main thing. Well, if they love one another, then th that's not love. This physical love, attraction, what's going on in the volleyball court is perfectly fine, but you know it's still just emotion at the beginning. You get this, right? Love comes over time. Love is something that it takes Time to develop. Our God, however, loved us from the beginning. Which is strange, is it not? And His love for the church you see mirrored in application in Song of Solomon. I'd like for you also to keep your fingers available because you've got some fingers that will need to go into Isaiah today as well, okay? So you've got Isaiah and you've got Song of Solomon. Isaiah chapters 2 through 5 and Song of Solomon in its entirety. You start at the very beginning, it says, The Song of Songs which is Solomon's. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. We talk too much about his love for us. We talk way too much about his love for us. We need to start focusing on the responsibility that requires us to love Him. Why, Christian, do we focus so much on His love for me? Real love is action. Am I wrong about that? And so if I love Him, I will be involved in His bride, His church. If I love Him, I will be actively evangelizing. If I love Him, I will be giving. I will sacrifice myself. I will allow Him to have me in every way. Are you getting me now? Do you understand what I mean? We talk entirely too much about His love for us. Oh, it doesn't matter if I do that. God loves me. What? What? That's a sycophantic kind of thinking, is it not? If you love Him, let Him change you. Let Him get into you. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cover that wicked sin and take it away. All the things He hates, we must start to hate. Look at verse 2 if you will. Let Him kiss me with the kisses of His mouth. Let Him. What words, right? For thy love is better than wine. Because of the savor of thy good ointment, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. Draw me. We will run after thee. Draw me in. The king hath wrought me, brought me into his chains. I love this idea of drawing. Because, you know, he draws all unto himself. If he is what? Lift it up. The Word of God says, if I be lifted up, it will draw all men unto myself. You, you do get this concept that if you and I, on a daily basis, are living different and lifting up Christ and making the center of our lives, people are going to look at that. They're going to say something's unique about Him. I'm attracted to that. Oh God, help me! Because most certainly, when people see the difference between who we are in Christ and the others, there's going to be a massive coming unto the Savior. I am black, but comely, she says. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon, I need you to know that it has nothing to do with your appearance. If people get the idea that, hey, if I'm really beautiful, oh, everybody in the world is going to go, oh, I want to be a Christian because they're so beautiful. All those Christians. Look around. Christians are not beautiful. Okay, they're not. They're just like everybody else. And she says, Look not upon me because I'm black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. But mine own vineyard 
have I not kept? Interesting. That's a thought, isn't it? Mine own vineyard have I not kept. Oftentimes, we work so hard for those that are around us, family, friends, the secular world, that we forget to care for our own vineyard, our own church, our own people. The Savior of the world desires for us to be active in His vineyard. Look at this in verse 7. Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest, where thou makest thy flock to rest at night. For why should I be as one that turneth aside by the flocks and thy companions? You go to Psalm 23 for just a minute. Psalm 23, you know it. Verses 1 and 2, especially, I believe, verse 1 of Psalm 23. He tells us in Psalm 23, and he likens us to sheep, does he not? And the Word of God tells us, the Lord is my I shall not. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me. How did he do that? How did he do that? You know, there was a garden. The Garden of Gethsemane. You know it, right? There Jesus resorted at times. At one time, particularly, He knew He was going to die for you. And the process of hemothidrosis set in. Hemothidrosis is bloody sweat. It is a phenomenon that is scientific and medical where a person is under such stress that the capillaries under the skin actually break and the blood is mixed with sweat and instead of just water coming out, of those capillaries, of those ducts, blood comes out. This is the beginning of our Savior's passion. And He said unto the Lord, God! If it's possible for this cup to pass from me, is it possible? Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And the love process of passion started right there. Now, where does it end? (laughs) I don't think it ever does. Do you know that in his omniscience, he knows you forever. He knew when you'd be born. He knew what your start would be. He knows what your end on this earth is going to be. And in glory, our Savior loves you forever, forever. And he's able to do that on a personal level, on a one-on-one level. You say, but there's so many Christians. It doesn't matter. You are so valuable to him. And he knows you by name. He cares about you. And if we could only think like He thinks, if we could only consider things as He does, if you're looking at verse 8, it says, If thou know not, O thou fairest among women, go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock and feed thy kids beside the shepherd's tents. I've compared thee, O my love, to a company of horses in Pharaoh's chariots, thy cheeks are comely with rows of jewels, thy neck with chains of gold. We will make the borders of gold with studs of silver while the king sitteth at his table by spikenard. My spikenard sendeth forth the smell thereof. A bundle of myrrh is my well-beloved unto me. He shall lie all night betwixt my breasts. My beloved is unto me as a cluster of camphire in the vineyards of Engedi. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes. You know, as I consider the eyes, and I consider our brains, and I consider the windows that take in the things around us, as I consider the love that we ought to have for those that are around us, I can't help but think we may not be hitting the mark. I think we might be missing the mark sometimes on God's love for us. It is interesting to me that chapter 2 and verse 1 speaks of him as the rose of Sharon, but also speaks of you as the rose of Sharon. This is weird. Look at it in chapter 2. I am, listen to this, the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. As the lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. 
As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to me. His banner over me is... You've seen this. Often, my friends, we forget about our need to love Him sacrificially. And we think all about how much He loves us. What a change it would make in my life if I actually did obey Mark 12.30. Would you go there for just a second? Look with me at Mark chapter 12 and verse 30. What does the Word of God say? You remember the detergent, right? A, L, L, you know the detergent, correct? Here, look at with. Will you read this with me? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. I suppose the question for us is simple. Can you honestly say that you love Him Every part of your being. I'm not talking about, I just love the Lord. No. I'm talking about emotion. I'm talking about this fun little feeling that I get. Oh, you know what that does? It guides me to religiously feel like I have to be in church at least once a week. And that's not love. It guides me to believe that as long as somehow I am close to being right, that that's enough. Hey, can I tell you something? This week, Christopher Galetto went out and witnessed. Okay? And this gentleman went out and talked with several different people about the Lord. When I hear Christopher go, he gets ready to go to the door. First of all, Christopher is a lot like me. He and I are rabbits. How many of you know what I'm talking about? All right, some of you are, you know, Tom is a turtle. Tom's a turtle. Tom is just like, hello, how are you? God's love to you. I'm all like, I'm all, I'm all like, hey, come here. How are you doing? Good to see you. I'm off and on and on, you know. Christopher is the same way. Comes to the door. Hi, my name's Christopher from First Baptist Church. Are you 100% sure if you tired today that you'd go to heaven? I mean, it's just boom, like that. Just like this. He gave me a number this week of somebody that he had spoken to. Do you know something? God uses you the way you are because He loves you the way you are. Let me say that again. God uses you the way you are because He loves you the way you are. Can you say that with me? God uses you the way you are because He loves you the way you are. Now, I don't mean, I don't mean to be sick here. Okay, I don't want to say something that... Uh, makes it kind of, you know, stomach turn. But Solomon had a thousand wives and concubines. All right? This woman that he's speaking of, this Shunammite, was just one of them. Well, so that kind of makes me not want to read Song of Solomon now, right? <laughs> Why did you say that, Pastor? Because our Christ knows you intimately. Everything about you. He made you. And do you know what? He can love that whole row of people equally. He can do that. Say, Pastor, are you saying he's married to more than one? No, he's not. He's married to the church of the living God, but he can individually love Devel. He can individually love Earl. He can individually love each and every one of us. As you go through Song of Solomon... As you look into verse two, chapter 2, him being who he is, then seeing the maidens of chapter 3, the king's offer in his love of chapter 4. I want you to go to Isaiah. Just run over to Isaiah. All right? This all fits together right now. All right? This all fits together right now. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy soul. Every one of you as a personality God loves. And He is your Father. And Jesus Christ is the husband to the bride. All of us. And you are allowed to be close to Him. You're allowed to talk with Him. You're allowed to get on your face and be with Him. Alright? And nothing about that is wrong. Nothing. 
Our God and King desires to know from you, to hear from you. Look at verse 30 here, if you will, one more time. Love the Lord with how much of your heart? What is your heart? It's the deepest part of your being. As you're looking at Isaiah chapter 2, now Isaiah chapter 1 is beautiful. And I, man, I, I just don't have time to get into it. And verse 18 of chapter 1 says, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be what? White as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be what? Wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. It. Real love demands that we act differently. In Isaiah chapter 2, the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, it says, It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it and many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and He will teach us of His ways and we will walk in His paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. My God says... Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Let me say it. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. I realize there's this push against what they call Christian nationalism. It sounds to me like God is a Christian nationalist. (gasps) Pastor, you're terrible. I'm not saying not to give people a choice. I'm just saying God says in His Word, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Should nations make their God the Lord? Where in the world did we ever get the idea that nations shouldn't make God the Lord? Where did we get that idea? Now, I don't know what definition people are using for Christian nationalism. But I will say this. I believe that if that means that entire nations should be falling under the power of the Holy Spirit and revived, and people should come to Jesus Christ as personal Savior and give their lives to Him. If that's what it means, I'm all for it. How many of you are all for every person coming to Jesus Christ? Now, I'm not saying that it will happen. I'm not sure that it will happen. But the goal is A-L-L. That all peoples would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And what's going on in Iran is just fine with me. So I've heard that Iran gives all kinds of money to the battle and to, to Hezbollah, to, 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 to the Hamas movement, to these that are involved in trying to destroy Israel. I believe that that's true. But I also believe that God is at work ripping apart Iran. And right now, instead of 75,000 mosques, there are only 25,000 mosques because people are coming to Christ so fast, they're having to shut down the mosques. And that excites me. You say, well, pastor, that ought not to happen. That's destroying their culture. You do not think like God if you believe that. God is wanting to change Iraq into a, a Christian nation. Iran into a Christian nation. All of the Middle East as a Christian nation. He wants to see the world come to Him. How many of you want to see people burn in hell? Do you want to see people burn in hell? Well, then why in the world wouldn't we purport to say, let the nations be glad. Let the nations come to Christ. If that means that the entire world comes to Him, are we that concerned about it? I mean, well, now, pastor, you have to give them a choice. I agree. And it ought to be a free will choice. But do you believe God can save an entire nation? Yes. Is there any too, anything too hard for God? No. Oh, my friends. If we could just see the nations as He sees it. You say, now, pastor, why did you bring that out? Because one day, woo, I'm going to tell you this. 
one day, Jesus Christ is going to... Look up here, please listen to me. Take seriously this message. One day, Jesus is going to come to this world and He's going to rule and reign with a rod of iron. And He is going to make of the world an entire world that only submits to Him. And I'm here to tell you, He's going to rule and reign all of, for a thousand years. And you say, Pastor, some are going to come against I know that towards the end. But here, my friends, you start to see the beginning, verse 5. Isaiah chapter 2, O house of Jacob, come ye. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let's do it now. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east and are soothsayers like the Philistines and they please themselves and the children of strangers. Oh, my friends, may all of Israel come back to Christ. Do you know that one day all of the Jewish people that are there, that are alive at that time, will bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ and realize He whom they have pierced? Do you understand this? Won't that be a day? And won't it be an incredible time when for a thousand years He reigns? Why, Juan? Why is this so important? Love. Love. He will love the world. He will be in charge of the world for a thousand years and beyond. Beyond. And that's what this message is all about. He will love for a thousand years. Look at verse 19, if you will. Isaiah chapter 2. They shall go into the holes of the rocks, into the caves of the earth, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty. When He arises, they shake terribly the earth. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver, his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship to the moles of the batch, to go into the clefts of the rock. You know, the Word says here in this passage that He will cause them to beat their plows, their, their, um, their instruments of war into plows. He will do this. He will make all things new at that time. I consider this and it blows my mind, but right now is the concern of my heart. Not when He arrives. Right now is the concern of my heart. Christian, look up here. This week, did we tell someone about Christ? Did we give the full Gospel to somebody? Listen, did we give the Gospel to someone? You see, we can be a part of the solution or we can be a part of the problem. Do you understand what I mean? How many of us are ready for that day when Jesus Christ will rule and reign? I know you are. I get that. But are we understanding that the whole purpose of His entire thing from beginning to end, the providence of God, is because He loves us. He loves us, just like we saw there in Song of Solomon. The question isn't about His love for us. The question is, do you love Him? And how much do you love Him? Let me see. This world, dear Lord, as though I were looking through Your eyes. A world of men who don't want You, Lord, but a world for whom You died. Let me kneel with You in the garden. Blur my eyes with tears of agony. For if once I could see this world the way you see, I just know I'd serve you more faithfully. Let me see this world, dear Lord, through your eyes when men mocked your holy name. 
when they beat you and spat upon you, Lord. Let me love them as you love them just the same. Let me stand high above my petty problems and grieve for men hell bound eternally. For if once I could see this world the way you see, I just know I'd serve you more faithfully. Amy. Linford, you guys remember us talking about this. In Sunday school, we talked about the broken body of Christ. His back so messed up that the bones were exposed. The robe being ripped off of those bones and the, and the serum and the blood starting to flow once again. Him being thrown onto that cross, not planed wood, by the way. On that rough timber with His hands attached to that cross by nails. One in His feet. Him hanging, knees bent, and for three and a half hours having to rub those exposed bones of his back up and down just to breathe. Because hanging like that kept him from being able to breathe. So I actually had to pull up on those nails to get a breath before he went back down. And over and over again for three and a half hours. You say, that's just, why did he do that? You know. Do we love them like he loves them? Do we love each other like he loves us? Well, I just can't forgive. I've just got to see the negative. No, you don't. You don't. In Christ, you can be what He wants you to be. The criticism and the words that are said and the gossip and the nonsense can all stop if we would just see the world the way He sees it. And from that situation where he had been in the garden and for days under judgment and, and then finally on that cross with that thorns three inches long deep inside his scalp and through his temples. He looks down from a cross where they had beaten and destroyed everything about him, even ripping out his beard and letting all that pus come out and his whole body just writhing in pain. And he says, Lord, forgive them. For they know not what they do. If we could only see this world like he sees it, the song of Solomon and the beauty and the love of all of that and his coming thousand year reign would make so much more sense to us. We'd start to understand why he's doing what he's doing, how he's ending this world, destroying the old and starting anew. All of it. We'd get it all from the beginning to the end. And we would be different. And people would see us different. Not that I'm going to look any better. I'm sorry. But it could change your disposition to a point where people are literally attracted to the Christ in you. I watched this week, and I'm done, but I watched this week this guy that had dealt with a Christian. He wasn't saved himself. <laughs> it was wild. We were out on evangelism, and I saw this, I actually witnessed this. 
And the guy said, you're, you're an evangelist from that church? You're one that's out telling people about He said, yeah. He said, I've never seen any pastor or evangelist that was excited as you are. I actually heard this. This kid said it. And he and his uh, person that he was with, Nye and Jason, they got saved. Because this guy was so excited about Jesus. He was so in love with Jesus. And the guy just said, he, he confessed that was the reason that he wanted to come to Christ. Now you tell me if that's not incredible. God is good. The question for you today is this. Are we still with the negative criticism and, and this and that? I got to, you know, that just can't be. And this is wrong. And this is, man, get to seeing the world as Christ sees it. Don't be mad at the LGBTQ community. Reach out and see them one to Christ. Don't be angry with this group or that. Yeah, but you don't know. Those are those really extreme Democrats. Those are those crazy Republicans. Who cares? They're souls. Amen. Would you bow your head, close your eyes for just a second, and start to pull away from all the hate and the bitter thoughts towards others and this person and that guy. And man, it might even happen here in this church that we talk negatively about somebody. God, help us. What are we doing? Man, look at them as Jesus sees them. God, forgive them for they know not what they do. After all of that, really? God, forgive them. God, forgive them. If you're here this morning, you say, I'm not sure I'm saved. I just don't know if I have given my heart to Him. I don't remember a time and a place I actually did that. Would you just slip your hand up? Just slip your hand up. If you're not sure you're saved, go ahead and, and slip your hand up. Anybody? I haven't even called for an invitation. People are already here down on their face. If some of you want to join them, just